All right, the risk averse people have a malevolent universe premise. From my experience, they envy and spite you once they know you dream big. Our culture doesn't root for risk takers anymore. They want to undercut us and tell us how our dreams will fail. Yes, I mean, that's absolutely right. And I think that's part of the difference between American culture and, and European culture and other cultures is that traditionally in America, we have rooted for the risk takers. Traditionally in America, we have supported the risk takers. Traditionally in America, you know, we embraced risk taking. We embraced dreaming big. We embraced laying it all out on the ground. If the value was a positive value, if a value was worth it, and of course the only person, as we've talked about, to determine what's worth it is you. In the context of life, in the context of economic growth and technological advancement, in the context of living, we've always embraced risk. And the culture has changed. And Part of that is a malevolent universe premise. Part and and you know it's it's a it's a real issue of what comes before what. But I think risk aversion is a consequence of malevolent universe premise, which is directly related to and maybe causally related to a distrust of reason, distrust of science, distrust of of, of rational thinking, and an an embracing of emotion, an embracing of fear. People who live in fear don't take risks. They're already, they're already afraid. If you take on risk, they're going to be more afraid. People who live in fear tend to be tribalistic. Tribalistic people don't take risk. They follow. They follow the tribe. So the malevolent universe premise, this idea that reality will be against you, is set against you, that only bad things would happen, that risk is never worth taking is suddenly part of, a metaphysical part of, the views of, of certain cultures. And it's, you know, it's, it's even part of, of religion. Because religion, it's out of your hands. There's somebody else that determines what's going to be successful and what is not. Religion is about praying for success, not acting on it. Religion is about, well, I mean, the odds are what they are. God has set them. It's more like gambling. So the malevolent universe premise, this idea that bad things will happen, um, the fact that people envy, the, pa the fact that people resent success, I mean, a lot of that is linked to altruism, which is a lack of confidence. Right? A lack of confidence in yourself because you're pursuing your values. Remember, what is, this is good, what does risk-taking take? What does it take to have a risk-taking mentality? It takes self-esteem. And self-esteem comes from success and recognition of that success and understanding where that success comes from. It takes, you know, associated with self-esteem, self-confidence. It takes knowledge. To take on risk, you have to know what you're doing. It takes a profound respect for your own mind, your own thinking, your own knowledge. So what you need to be successful are the two, uh, to be a risk taker and to be a successful risk taker are the two primary values in objectivism. You need self-esteem and you need reason. You need those to be your values. You need those you have to have gained those. And of course, you need a purpose because there's a purpose to your risk taking. You don't take risk for the sake of taking risk. And this is an important distinction. Some people take risk for the sake of taking risks. They thrive on living on the edge. That's what gets them going. Not the production of values, not the creation of something, but just living on the edge of death. So somebody asked, what do you make of Alex Hannell's risk-taking of climbing dozens of mountains without a rope? I mean, there's something in me that says, wow, I mean, that's amazing that he has that confidence, that he has that ability, that he's so well-trained, that he's invested so much in doing that. But one slip, he's dead. One slip, he's dead. And is this the only way he can express his love of life 
there's something perverse, I think, by only being able to experience life on the edge of death. I mean, if you think about the movie Thelma and Louise, Thelma and Louise's message is you can only truly appreciate life on the verge of death, on the verge of catastrophe, on the verge of annihilation. That is what it's about. And I, so I, I wonder whether somebody like Alexander has rational values, whether he thinks of it in that sense. I mean, I admire his courage, I admire his skill, but has he really thought it through? Yeah, Jonathan Honing has a quote from Man on a Wire, the guy who walks across huge chasms on a wire. He says, life is lived on a wire. No, it's not. Life cannot be fully lived, in my view. Life cannot be fully lived on a wire. Cannot be fully lived with the fear of death or, or, or the knowledge that death is one little slip away. I, I, I think it's... I think these people who do this, I mean, in one respect, I admire them and respect them. On the other hand, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. Uh, Justin, I don't know. What was the... Justin. Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got your super chat. I haven't answered it yet. I've got it. It's on my list. Sorry. I see it right now. Right. So the idea that risk-taking is an end in itself, which is what Thelma and Louise come to believe, it's what Man on a Wire has, it's what, I'm not talking about every mountain climber, but the mountain climber that really push it. That is an irrational belief, and it leads to, I think, uh, uh, taking on irrational risk where the, where the, where the reward does not justify. Remember, risk has two components, the probability of it happening and the severity. And if the severity is death, then the probability of it happening better be low and the rewards should be very, very high. Very, very high. And I'm skeptical about both of those in the sense of walking on tight ropes between two buildings and, and climbing on sheer rocks without a rope, right? Without a rope. It's just something. So they are risk averse people. And I think we live in a culture that encourages risk aversion. And then there are people who take on unnecessary risk. And I think our society encourages that as well, because we're much more enamored with the guy who walks on a rope. We're much more enamored with the guy who climbs on a sheer cliff than we are with the entrepreneur who gives up everything to try something new. Or the, or the young person who decides not to save for retirement because he's going to invest all his money in his business and make something of itself. We don't allow him to do that. Notice. We don't allow him to do that. We insist. We insist that he put 12% of his money into Social Security every month. He has no choice to start a business with that money to take on risk with that money. We've taken that ability away from him. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. 
But but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing. Whether you're looking at this, uh, and and you know the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.